Good evening and uh, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm so glad you could be on here with me. I'm here in uh, Dillon Beach, which is 65 miles north of San Francisco. And we had a pretty good day going and now we have uh, fog rolling in. So uh, I am just, it's just awesome to be here with you. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk about your story and a universal story. I'm going to talk about Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. And basically tonight is about story all the way around. So I know that this has been one of the most uh, incredible opportunities. Uh, this being uh, sheltering in, being at home, going out and being careful and uh, whatever you're up to out there. I know that uh, I talked to lots of people over Zoom and other, uh, I'm doing most of my trainings online now. And so it's, some of it is about frustration of what's happening. Some of it's about um, uh, being angry at the way things are working. Some of it's around fear. All of that stuff comes up. And I think right now, right now is an awesome, awesome opportunity to uh, take a look at ourselves. I think that um, opportunities like this don't come uh, along very often, which is the opportunity to be with yourself and to look at you and to take a look at what your life is about. And so I want to talk about this story that we all have in us. And um, I'll start this way, that um, there was a man named Joseph Campbell, and I've talked about him sometimes before, uh, sometime before, but he is, uh, he was an amazing, uh, author, an amazing, uh, observer of human nature. He was a professor at Sarah Lawrence College. He was a professor of, uh, uh, mythology and religion. And what he did was he traveled all over the world and he talked to people about their mythology. He went to tribes in the, the Philippines or in Peru or in uh, the Arctic Circle or all over the world from Japan to Singapore uh, to uh, northern Canada to the Plains Indians, all over the place. He talked to people about their mythology. And uh, after he had done all of this research, this is what... Uh, this is what he determined. This is what he found out. He found out that there was a universal story that was in the consciousness of all these separate groups of people. And the story was called the hero's journey. And the hero's journey looked differently for each tribe, each group of people. And that hero's journey had different characters, but the essence of a hero's journey was the same throughout all the world. Around the world, people had a version of the hero's journey. And I want to talk about that because there was an, an, another famous professor and psychiatrist named Carl Jung. And Carl Jung said that we have a collective unconsciousness, a, excuse me, a collective conscious. And that collective conscious came from... Um, uh, a thousand, a thousand ancestors that we that came before us, and that human beings have within us. Each one of us, you, me, everyone has in us this story about the hero's journey, and I want to talk about how, why that matters, and why right now in our lives is one of the most amazing times to take advantage of the hero's journey. And so the universal idea that there's a hero in every person is a powerful idea. And it also can be something that we look at in our lives, which I'll touch on in a second. And also, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, one of the great heroes journeys of all times, which is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. So the heroes journeys show up all over the place. They show up um, in, uh, in the movies all the time. Uh, uh, for for instance, movies like a, a Lord of the Rings, you know, or uh, books like The Odyssey, or experiences like Dante's Divine Comedy, where he goes down into hell and then into heaven and has this journey. 
And so it um, even even the 500 word story in the Bible called the prodigal son is actually a hero's journey. And so given that is a universal story and given it's inside of us, what can we do? How can we use our time? How can we look at that story and determine the next steps we want to take in our life? Because as I said, this opportunity, which is also a scary time, it's a difficult time. It's, it broke all our experiences around consistency. We've had to act in different ways. And most of you have acted heroically and you have, uh, um, uh, you know, had a lot of uh, stuff in your life that wasn't uh, consistent with how you wanted to live or it wasn't uh, something that, that was, you were familiar with. And pretty much most of us have stepped up our game to have an experience where we're serving each other. And that's part of a hero's journey as well. But what I wanted to challenge you to do tonight is to think about when it's all done and over, have you, how have you used your time in preparing for the next step, which could be a hero's journey for you. So the hero's journey has elements involved with it. Usually at the beginning of any journey that we take, any time that we get out there and design our life to take a risk, to go further and to learn something, there's something that calls that's called resistance. And resistance is part of the hero's journey. In almost every story, the hero feels what's called a tug or a pull towards something that they resist in the beginning. Oftentimes, the hero's journey is about a person uh, or that who, who has a lot of comfort in their life, who has it easy. And then they feel this pull, pulling them toward this adventure that they don't quite understand or know. And it pulls them away from what's easy. So um, the very first part is the part about getting off the couch, is about looking at designing your life. So here's some questions um, that I work with my clients on and that I always ask myself in the beginning of a hero's journey. So the questions can be, um, what kind of life do you want to live? I mean, we're so, we're so engaged in detail right now and just getting by or surviving or, or, or how are we going to handle this boredom or frustration or anger, all that, that we sometimes don't stop and ask ourselves when it's over, what kind of life do we want to live? What can you do right now in designing your life? And you start asking yourself that question. Maybe it's a life of some adventure. Maybe it's a life of making a big, bigger difference. Maybe it's just a life of, of having more joy and touching more people in whatever way that is a service to them. I don't know for you, but the question is, how do you want to live? Um, how do you want to live your life or what kind of life do you want to live? Another question is, uh, what in your life have you not experienced yet that you want to experience? What is this an experience for you that you have not had that experience, but there's kind of a pull, a, a longing for it? And you can ask yourself that question. Another question is, what have you not seen in your life that you want to see? What places or experiences that you have not seen in your life that you really want to see. And so another question would be, um, what is the difference you want to make? And what do you want to share in uh, with others? What's your legacy going to be? <laughs> so uh, I'm looking at comments right now. Oh, my friend, Mary Gag. Awesome. Thank you, Mary, for being on here. And uh, you guys can comment there uh, if you have that capability at any time. And uh, I appreciate uh, I appreciate you joining me here. So now we're um, 
We're talking about questions that get you thinking about what your next step is. And I think a lot of people don't want to answer those questions or have a difficulty with it because it means that you're going to be challenging yourself. It means that there's something out there that you want to create. The hero's journey is always started from dissatisfaction. It starts with this is the way it is now and this is where I want to be and what is the gap between those things and it's a, a powerful challenge. I think people work best when they're um, when they're challenged. I think people work best when we're under pressure. You know, I love the advertisement. Um, hey, thank you, Mary, for that. I appreciate you as well. Uh, uh, oh, Mary Bacon as well. Wow, great. Thank you for being on here. Nice. <laughs> I think there's a there's a commercial I love. It's about uh, with Corona beer where there's two chairs, there's a Corona beer and we're staring out at the ocean. I think some of you may have seen that that uh, that commercial and that's supposed to be the epitome of being relaxed. And that's sp supposedly kind of the end result of all of our work is sitting in a chair, staring out at the ocean, having an ice cold Corona. And, you know, I like a ice cold Corona as well as the next person. But I don't think that I that we're at our best when we're doing that. When we've done the hero's journey, when we've done the hard stuff, sitting there looking out at the ocean is a great reward. Having a Corona or whatever is a great reward, but it's not the end result. People work best. We all work best when we have a challenge, especially a positive challenge and something that's going to, um, uh, something that we can learn something from. So those questions that I just asked you, are questions to start you thinking about what your next step is going to be. And so that's the beginning of a hero's journey. The reluctance and the resistance are part of the hero's journey. Um, like, I can't do that. I can't travel that places. I don't, I'm not able to, I don't have the ability. I'm, I'm too old. Uh, uh, I haven't had the education. I'm the wrong, uh, wrong type of person. Whatever, whatever we tell ourselves to limit our journey, all of that is natural and normal. And so the challenge here is for you to step into uh, your hero's journey by defining your next step, whether it's tomorrow or whether that thing is a week from now or a month from now. Start designing your life or your life is going to or the circumstances are just going to define you. And there's plenty of that going on too. So the hero's journey, the first thing then is leaving home and leaving home is feeling that resistance. The next thing in a hero's journey, and they're in different orders and different stories and different, um, different myths, but the next thing is meeting companions out there in the world. So there's always, the hero always meets companions and gets together with other people who are on their hero's journey as well. And here's the funny thing about companions. Companions that you meet on the hero's, hero's journey are not exactly the people that uh, we like all the time. It's people that challenge us. <laughs> it's the, the companions are funny. It's, it's like in the movie Lord of the Rings, if you've seen it, how different the companions, the traveling companions are with each other. And there's a lot of arguing and a lot of bickering, but what holds them together is their commitment and their word to each other. And so once you start a hero's journey, you're going to start to meet people. And I'll tell you uh, one thing that, that we can start in on a hero's journey in a little bit and to get yourself meeting some people that are out there that are on this that are on a journey for the purpose of their life as well but anyway those companions are make uh, uh, uh powerful that have a powerful challenge and they also really challenge us to for our ability to keep our word and our ability to uh stay focused in the direction that we want to go the next thing in the hero's journey is meeting the people of wisdom in a hero's journey, when you declare yourself into a hero's journey, when you declare yourself to do something different or to learn, you're going to bring into your life people that have wisdom. And wisdom is the people that are simply have been on this journey before you. And you bring those people into your life. So think right now 
about the people in your life that have wisdom that you can think about um, listening to. Because part of the hero's journey is humility. <laughs> one tough one for me, absolutely. But humility means that you are have the ability to learn in your life, that you aren't certain about everything all the time, you know? So that is part of the hero's journey is when you meet the people of wisdom, can you be a learner and a beginner? I was traveling to uh, Guam one time from San Francisco, and that's a long flight. And we stop over in Honolulu and then, then all the way over to Guam, which is uh, fairly near Japan. And I was sitting next to a gentleman and I got into conversation. It turned out he was a congressman. And one of the things that one of my mentors, Brian Clemmer, always told me was shut up and ask questions and learn from people. You don't got to share about how smart you are all the time. <laughs> and so what I learned was I asked this congressman because we were working with leadership. I said, you know, what have you learned about being a leader? And um, he said, um, well, what I've learned is one of the most the greatest one of the greatest traits of leadership is persistence because I lost three elections before I was I was um, uh, uh, elected on the fourth one. And he said persistence is a powerful quality of leadership. And so I've remembered that all along. It's been a long time and now I'm sharing it with you. And I, when I catch myself wanting to give up, I kind of remember that that persistence is powerful. But I wouldn't have I wouldn't if if I'd have just talked about my story and who I am and what I'm doing, I never would have had the opportunity to, to really listen to him. So it's being a beginner, it's being curious, it's being a learner, it's part of your hero's journey. So anytime you're out there, um, you, there's something that you, I think that we can learn from other people if we're willing to have a conversation coming from humility. And then part of the hero's journey is called the jungle. And the jungle is the part of the journey where we come really face to face with our past, come face to face with all of those things that we carry with us that um, that affect every decision we make until we're complete with our past. And so hacking your way through a jungle with a machete in the dark, the dark, uh, the dark jungle and all of the vines and all of the trees and all the brambles and all the stuff that we're going to push our way through represents the experiences from our past. And uh, you and I know that we still have work to do on that. And most of us have been on this journey for a while and we started to reconcile the past because I will tell you, if you are not complete with the past, if you haven't come to grips with it, if you haven't understood it, had an emotional experience around it and been with it, um, it, it will run your life and you'll, you'll call it fate. You won't know why. And I cannot tell you the number of people that I, that I come across that have sort of dreams and wishes and wants and hopes, but they haven't, they, they don't have the confidence in themselves or the, or, or the drive or the ability. Uh, well, they all have the ability, but they, they don't see that they have the ability because they haven't come re reconciled their past. And that's powerful and emotional. And it's a lifelong journey as well doing that. So part of the hero's journey then is, ha is facing yourself in the mirror and looking at how I make my decisions. Are my decisions being made by my purpose? Or are my decisions being made by my past? And so the past is a great thing to, to, to learn from, a great thing for experience. But I'm not sure that it's a great predictor of the future when you're committed to a hero's journey. And so the next thing is, all right, hi, John, and oh my gosh, Jerry, awesome. Thank you for being on here, you guys, are, and Sue, as always, friend, my friend Sue, uh, great samurai, all of you, and John and Jerry, um, thank you. So here we go. Uh, hacking our way through the jungle is something that we just do, and it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's about a lifetime's worth of work, but it's also something that you can start to free yourself up from okay 
Hi, Debbie. Great. Thank you for being on. Now, so the next part of the hero's journey is called the battle. What is the battle? The battle is the test. And the battle is called the battle of the insurmountable odds. And the insurmountable odds are that battle that you face that. Remember, some of you have been, um, do, some of you have done an exercise at a seminar called The Wall. And when you stood there for the very, for the very first 10, 15, 20 seconds, you looked up at this wall that you had to get over as part of the exercise, and it looked impossible. That's how it looks in a hero's journey. Some of it, there are moments where it looks impossible, and that's the test. Um, great story of a hero's journey is called David and Goliath. And David and, Goli and, and David faces the insurmountable odds. And we will all face the insurmountable odds in our hero's journey. Where we want to turn back, where we don't want to do it any longer, or it gets too hard, or we've got to grind it out, or we meet the very obstacle that we were afraid of, and we've got to face it in the mirror, as I said before. And so that is the test, I think that this what's going on for us now in this world is a test and how we're going to handle that how i come out of this thing and and my personal character uh is going to be tested am i going to uh cave in and uh do what's only right for me or do what i want to do or am i going to be part with you with all of you am i going to live with you guys and do what's right for other people in following procedure, following doing stuff that I don't want to do or that's hard because it's not for me, but it's for saving a life somewhere else. That's the test. Or the test for you is um, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's keeping yourself physically fit. Maybe it's, it's doing the one thing for yourself that you haven't done before, but you will be tested if you're on a hero's journey and that's where the juice in life comes and then finally the end of that is this um the end of the, the hero's journey not exactly the end but the end is the of one part of it is the reward that you get and the reward can be uh for all of these hero stories the award can be power the award can be riches the award can be getting uh getting uh uh, the man or the woman. Uh, it can be changing your life in some way. And now you've gotten this reward. Often it's just kind of uh, like a treasure chest that you open up and it's glittering, glittering gold. And that's the reward. And that reward is at the top of the mountain. And so the hero experiences the reward that other people will not get or will not experience. And that's why all of this battle and all of this stuff that you are starting is a new journey for us. And uh, you, ha you don't know everything. You haven't learned everything. You have great experience, but you know you're in a hero's journey when you're experiencing uncertainty. <laughs> so the challenge is there. The learning is there. The power is there for us to experience um, the hero inside us because that universal story according to Carl Jung or Joseph Campbell lives in us in a genetic way lives in our DNA that there's a hero inside you me and everyone and uh, there's a decision to make that I'll talk about in a second now one of the most important parts of the hero's journey that's sometimes left out in the hero's journey story but it's the most important part I feel is called the return. The return is after you fought the battle and after you've received the reward. Now, I think the greatest reward in the hero's journey is um, the wisdom that you get. Absolutely, Mary. Um, surrender is part of it. <laughs> Surrendering into whatever is in front of you. One of the most difficult things for me to do. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So, we're, so we, as Sue said, we're all heroes in the making. You choose it. Absolutely, John. So it's a choice in front of us. And I'm telling you, many people back down 
from that choice because they've chosen a different way of being. And I want to talk about that different way of being for a second. But I said I was going to tell you a story. And I'll tell you a story about the hero's journey. And there's a thousand stories written in a thousand movies or a thousand books about the hero's journey. And you would recognize it once you get in it because of the elements I talked about. But we have, uh, we have a great, great hero. And her name is Dorothy. And there was a book called uh, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. It was written by Frank Baum, Frank L. Frank Baum, B-A-U-M. And it was written in 1911. And it was about Dorothy and her journey. So Dorothy, I'm just going to tell it very quickly, but Dorothy was a pain in the butt. And in the beginning of the movie, uh, she had some self-centered stuff. She was gone. She was whining and complaining. And she decided because things weren't going her way, things uh, she was going to take her scruffy dog there and she was going to leave home. She was going to run away from home. So Dorothy now has run away from home, but she didn't get too far before she met some guy that said, you know, your your Auntie M and everything uh, miss you. And she decided, OK, well, I'm hungry now and I've gotten over two miles and now I'm going to turn around. And that's when the tornado came and changed her life. And the tornado sucked her up. And as you guys know, many of you know the story, the whole house falls down in Oz. Her, the house, her dog, all of it fall down and they land on top of this wicked witch and kill her. And uh, uh, if you have kids, this is a kind of a gruesome part of the story because the, the, the witch's feet are just kind of twitching there after this house fell on her. And Dorothy gets out of the house and she doesn't know where the heck she is. She meets the munch munchkins and they're all telling her, you're such a hero. And I love this part. Um, uh, 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 yeah, De Debbie, uh, handling my past completely. Well, you're going to get reward as you go along. Um, and it's never done. This whole thing about handling past and all of it is, it's just not done. But back to, back to Dorothy on this thing. So Dorothy, uh, oh, they're all celebrating about she's killed the wicked witch and they're all celebrating and she's dancing around and having a great time. Then she gets confronted by a powerful, another powerful witch and she gets confronted. And then that's when she starts into her whining routine. I didn't mean to do it. I'm so sorry. I it wasn't my fault. She go, she defaults into her victim, into this whiny person. She was great. She was, she was, it was amazing that she wanted to take credit not a problem when everybody was dancing around, but when she got confronted with what she had done, then she caved in on it. And that's kind of, um, I, you know, I don't know if you relate to that, but it's like everything's going well. And then all of a sudden I'm confronted in part of my journey. And do I cave in and do I, do I go back into self doubt and do I go back to the victim and whiny? And that's kind of what Dorothy did. Although the, uh, the munchkins, uh, got her on the, on the, on the trail and she headed out and they told her that what she needed to do was she needed to go see a person of wisdom, which was the Wizard of Oz, of course. Now, you know the story, right? She meets up with companions, just as I was talking about in the, in the journey. And she meets up with a brainless guy. She meets up with a, a guy that can't express his emotions. He's frozen, solid, you know, and then she meets up with the lion, which, you know, that he's he's again. He's operating from no courage whatsoever. He has no confidence and courage. So she ties up with a guy that's looking for a brain, uh, the scarecrow. She ties up with a tin man who has no emotional expression. And we want him to get that out, right? We want, we want to allow him to have an experience around that. And so these three unlikely companions uh, start traveling together. And Dorothy's in the book, Dorothy's really, really honest. I love Dorothy because what she says in the book is, I will travel with you as long as it serves me. And when, when it doesn't serve me any longer or I get what I want, I'm going to ditch you guys. The, essentially, that's what she says to her traveling companions in the beginning of the journey. Now, of course, things change when she finds out that they have to serve each other to survive or to get, get along. So... Dorothy's character shows up 
and the, the whining and all that kind of stuff. But now she starts to get a little stronger, right? So she gets to Oz, and I'm, this is, this is uh, uh, the Emerald City. She's in Oz. But she gets to the Emerald City, and this is the short version of this thing. And she meets with the wizard. And of course, as you know, the wizard is behind the curtain. He's a grifter of some kind. He doesn't really have knowledge. But I love what he does to Dorothy and the companions. So what he does is because he doesn't have the knowledge, he sends them off on this quest that he he believes they're they're, they're going to get killed or they're going to get lost or there's something's going to happen and they won't come back and bother him. So that's kind of she she sends him off. Now, what happens of course is they confront the the witch, they have a battle, they're they're in the middle of of uh with these uh flying monkeys and all that stuff that was pretty frightening as a child. Uh, and I watched the movie the other day in preparation to talk with you guys, and it it, does, it holds up pretty good. It really does. Uh, you know, even over all these years, it was made in 1939. So I'm talking about the book and the movie, but the movie is 39. It holds up pretty good with all these flying monkeys and all this kind of stuff. And finally, she is triumphant, and she returns to the wizard because he said, if you do this quest, then I will give you everything you want. And she returns to the wizard and stands in front of the wizard and says, you know, we want, uh, we want the reward. And the wizard says, um, okay, I'll tell you what, here's your reward. You had the courage the whole time, but it took the journey for you to have to, to know it for sure. And you had a brain the whole time, or you couldn't have worked this thing out and this journey showed you you had a brain. And the Tin Man, you had a heart the whole time. Look at the way that you treated your companions. Look at the way that you didn't turn around and run away when the chips were down. And you know that you have a heart. And Dorothy, and, and this is the part that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of strange. But Dorothy says, what about me? And he's in, because Dorothy wants to go back to Kansas. Now, the question is, in our life, what does it mean to return to Kansas? You know, for Dorothy returning, she wanted to go back to Kansas. Now, the people that she lived with, uh, Auntie M and uh, uh, Willard or whatever his uh, Harold, uh, uh, he he's kind of he's kind of non-emotional, and she's very severe. And Kansas in the movies in the black and is in black and white. It's not in color. And so why does she want to return to Kansas? Because she's like us. She wants to go back to what's familiar. That's, that's what she wanted. Just get me back to what I know. And can you guys relate to this? <laughs> it's like us going, uh, just get me back to what I know and everything will be okay. But of course, because of her willingness to hang in there with her companions and her willingness to fight the battle and her willingness to confront herself, she finds out that she could have gone home any time by clicking her heels together. And uh, But she needed that journey for her to realize the amount of love that she has inside of herself and that that love needs to be shared with people. And if it's not shared, so the return on the return home on the hero's journey is the part of your journey where you share your wisdom and your love and you, what you've discovered with other people to help them in their journey. So the purpose, one of the great purposes of a hero's journey is not just the wisdom, but it's the ability to share the wisdom with other people and to help other people along the way because you stumbled and fell yourself. You made a mistake yourself. And so the greatest, um, the, one of the greatest pleasures in life is sharing with other people some of the things that you've learned, not like telling them about what they should be doing at all, not coming from that space, but coming from the place of, um, I know you have it in you. I know that you have the hero in you because I didn't think I had it and I have it. And I discovered that because I was willing to stretch myself. And that starts 
with declaring yourself in your life and declaring yourself as a hero and declaring you understand and declaring that uh, you won't be stopped in this world and that you will make the difference you were born to make. <laughs> and you guys, without a doubt, without a doubt, have deserved the rest from doing a hero's journey, but you also now, no matter where you are, you are now in the middle or you're starting your hero's journey by designing your life and going and saying to yourself, this is how I want to live my life. I want to live my life with peace. I want to live my life with honor. I want to live my life with abundance. I want to make a difference with other people. I want to see this. I want to go to Peru. I want to experience the Northern Lights. I want to uh, uh, be with people and be of service in a, in a mission or an experience somewhere. And you declare yourself into your hero's journey. And in that declaration, that's powerful. And so tonight, all I wanted to do is talk about that. Now, Dorothy gets back. She realizes the power of her family. And I've spoken to a, a bunch of people over Zoom and doing trainings over Zoom, where one of the greatest things that's happened during this virus experience that we've got going here is that they've realized how much they love their family. They realized how much um, that these what these people mean. And even uh, people just going out and meeting strangers and doing something great for strangers. So um, as Sue says, living life and playing full out means that you're in your hero's journey. And that's the challenge for you guys. So I, I, I appreciate you being on this Facebook Live. Um, I have a, uh, a challenge for some of you. If you're interested, tomorrow night I'm going to uh, uh, be with uh, Mary Jo Hilliker. She's an awesome woman and a great trainer. And we are going to do um, a Zoom about the hidden walls and mastering some of the greatest holdbacks in our life. And I'm going to talk about that in, in re relationship to the hero's journey. It's all free, of course. And there uh, is the, ID, the Zoom ID for that. Um, and I'll also put it on my Facebook and, and uh, there. But that Zoom ID, if you want to take a second and you want to write that down, that's five o'clock Pacific time. You can just jump in and we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about something that I've discovered in my study here in the last three weeks. It's one of the most powerful things that holds us back and how to break through that. I just don't have time to talk about it tonight, but you are invited because um, we're we're in this together. You guys, I appreciate it. And um, so finish off the rest of the evening uh, loving the people around you. Finish off the rest of the evening creating some dissatisfaction in where you are now and where you want to be in a positive way. And we will uh, we'll meet again on the next uh, Facebook Live or we'll meet again tomorrow on a, on a bit of a Zoom journey that we're going to take together. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, make the difference you were born to make. Good night.